Welcome to this brief video introduction to warmth or febrile disease, known in Chinese as Wen Bing. Wen Bing is a school or system of disease treatment that evolved in response to epidemic diseases caused by rapid population growth in China in the 17th century. It was considered an extension of the ideas first proposed in the Shang Han Nun and adapted to deal with new diseases in new circumstances. The translation of Wen Bing poses a special problem. Wen in Chinese means warm or warmth. In the Western mind, warmth conjures up a positive sensation, which is at odds with the grim nature of the disease itself. Wen Bing has been translated as warm, warmth or febrile disease. I will mostly use the Chinese term in this presentation. Some general remarks can be made comparing the Wen Bing approach to Shang Han Lun theory. Apart from a focus on a different origin of disease, Wen Bing was the result of groundwork done by many doctors. Wen Bing introduces a number of new concepts, and there are two important diagnostic methods as compared to the Shang Han Lun focus on six channel theory. Also, as Shang Han Lun developed in a period of great hardship, the formulas proposed focus on enriching the yang. Wen Bing developed in a period of economic prosperity, and its formulas focus more on supplementing yin. In Wen Bing, there is much discussion on the role of dampness in disease, and it has been pointed out that the four great doctors of the Qing dynasty lived in very humid areas of China. Another point that is often forgotten is that the reference for herbal properties in the time of Shang Han Lun was the Shen Nong Ben Cao. During the main development of Wen Bing, herbal properties were mostly defined by the Ben Cao Gangmu of Li Shizhen. Wen Bing introduces two new forms of disease differentiation, the four aspects or levels, that is Wei, Qi, Ying and Xue, and differentiation according to the San Jiao or Triple Burner. Wen Bing also presents a number of new disease types, including notions about their origin and development. A particularly interesting idea is that of a lurking or latent disease, where the disease has its origin in an earlier season, but does not manifest itself until a later season. Toxins and epidemic disease were particularly relevant to those times, even though they had been discussed in texts centuries before. The first mention of concepts related to Wen Bing can be found in the Huang Di Neijing. Chapter 3 refers to latent disease with the following statement. When the body is attacked by cold in the winter, there will be warmth disease in the spring. The Huang Di Neijing also comments briefly on epidemic disease. However, the first two clear references to Wen Bing appear in the works of Zhang Zhongjing. In the Shang Han Lun, Wen Bing is defined as follows. In Taiyang disease, if there is fever and thirst, with no aversion to cold, this is Wen Bing or warmth disease. However, Zhang Zhongjing does not expand further on this concept in the Shang Han Lun. There is also a specific reference to San Jiao or triple burner differentiation in the Jingwei Yao Lue. In chapter 11, the master says, when there is pathogenic heat in the upper jiao, coughing develops into lung depletion. When there is heat in the middle jiao, there will be hardness. When there is heat in the lower jiao, there will be blood in the urine, with disturbance and retention. Also, chapter 3 speaks of yang and yin toxins, with recommendations for their treatment. In general, Zhang Zhongjing's heat-clearing formulas were to influence later when being doctors. After this, various doctors made incremental observations that would eventually contribute to Wen Bing theory. In the 7th century, Chao Yuanfang noted the signs and symptoms of several toxin-based diseases. Pang Anshu discussed the role of toxins in externally contracted disease. Wang Andao clearly distinguished warmth disease from cold damage disease. Zhu Gong, Wang Shishang and Wang Kentang made observations about latent diseases. But it was only in 1519 that the term latent warm disease was used for the first time. Before we come to the four main doctors of warmth disease, we have to mention two other major contributors. 
Liu Wansu is regarded as one of the key figures in the development of Wen Bing. He established the cold school of medicine after noting that the progression patterns of all diseases in six-channel theory are heat patterns, even if they originated from external cold. He used bitter, acrid and cold herbs to modify Shanghan Nun formulas that relied more on acrid and warm herbs. Liu Wansu was also the first to use Sanjiao differentiation as a basis to determine treatment for warmth disease. By the beginning of the Qing dynasty, warmth disease began to consolidate into a theoretical system independent of Shanghan Nun theory. Wu Youke wrote the treatise on warm epidemics, which includes an extensive description of epidemics and warmth disease. In this work, he distinguished between cold damage disease and epidemic disease. He noted that it can be transmitted from person to person and through the mouth and nose. Also that epidemic disease does not necessarily manifest immediately after exposure, and that it acts like a toxin. As an aside concerning the names of these doctors, the Zhe name in parentheses is the more formal name adopted by intellectuals. You will hear of Wen Bing doctors referred to by either name, so you should be familiar with both versions of their names. Perhaps the most renowned doctor in Wen Bing theory was Ye Tian Shi. Coming from a family of doctors, he also benefited extensively from education by a number of other physicians. In his book, The Treatise on Warm Heat Disease, he systematized differentiation according to the four levels or aspects, that is Wei, Qi, Ying and Xue. I give an introduction to these terms in my presentation on defensive and nutritive Qi, which I reference in the description section below. Ye Tian Shi gives these terms a slightly different interpretation in that they become a measure of the degree to which the pathogen is affecting the body. According to this theory, when being pathogens first attack the defensive or Wei level, and then potentially progress to further levels, the signs and symptoms of Wei level disease correspond to an external wind heat attack. They include fever and chills with a slight aversion to cold. There will often be nasal congestion with a cough accompanied by a sore throat. These would be indications of lung problems. The patient will experience headaches and increased thirst. The tongue will often have a red tip with a thin coating, and the pulse will be floating and rapid. When the disease progresses to qi level, it will spread to affect the spleen and other organs. Qi level disease shows characteristics similar to the Yang Ming pattern found in the Shanghan Nun. There will be vigorous fever with no aversion to cold, accompanied by profuse sweating. As yin has been attacked, there will be considerable thirst with a preference for cold beverages. The tongue will often be yellow and dry, and the pulse will be rapid and forceful. Diseases that are at the ying or nutritive level have either progressed from the qi level or could be latent diseases acquired in a previous season that now manifest themselves. Severe heat has damaged the patient's yin, provoking thirst. The disease now starts to affect the mind, which in TCM is strongly related to the heart shen or spirit. Rashes may begin to appear on the skin. The tongue is now deep red and the pulse thin and rapid. The shue or blood level is a critical state where the disease disturbs and exhausts the blood. Consciousness is now muddled. Fever provokes restlessness, delirium and can result in coma. There can be loss of blood or blood stasis. The tongue will be a very deep red or a purple color. The pulse will be submerged and forceful or choppy. From the described exacerbations of signs and symptoms, we can recognize that these levels dealt with very serious forms of disease. In discussing over 2,000 case histories, Ye Tian Shi proposed the pathology, transmission and treatment of these diseases in detail. He divided diseases into those involving and not involving dampness. He proposed treatments for both newly contracted diseases and latent diseases. He also developed differentiation according to the Sanjiao or Three Burners. His contributions to tongue diagnosis, which up to that time played a minor role in diagnosis, can be appreciated to this day whenever you visit a TCM physician. Xue Sheng Bai differentiated warmth disease according to whether it was caused by damp heat or heat alone. In Sanjiao diagnosis, he maintained that diseases caused by NAMP heat were more prone to attacking the spleen and stomach and treated them accordingly. Wu Ju Tong expanded on the work of Ye Tian Shi. Unlike Ye Tian Shi, he didn't come from a family of doctors 
and only began to study medicine at the age of 19. Also, he learned not by studying directly with other doctors, but rather by studying their texts. He wrote the systematic differentiation of warm diseases. In his work, he associated the organs with each of the three burners or three warmers. The function of the Sanjiao or triple burner is cryptically referred to in the 66th difficulty of the Nanjing classic, which states, The Sanjiao is the special messenger of the original Qi. It rules the passage of the three Qi and their progression through the five Zhang and six Fu body organs. Wu Zhu Tong associated the heart, pericardium and lungs with the upper jiao, the spleen and stomach together with the small and large intestines with the middle jiao, and the liver, kidneys and bladder with the lower jiao. He used this as the basis for warm disease differentiation and determination of appropriate treatment. His treatment also focused on the preservation of essence, whose loss he saw as one of the underlying causes of warmth disease. He derived a number of formulas which are popular to this day, including Yin Chao San. Wang Mang Ying wrote The Warp and Weft, or The Latitudes and Longitudes of Warm Heat Disease, where he systematized warmth disease theory with respect to classic texts. He summarized the differences between newly contracted and latent heat disease, clarified the concept of summer heat, and warned against the excess use of cold herbs. The development of Wen Bing as a medical system encountered many problems. Given Chinese cultural respect for the medical classics, and Zhang Zhongjing in particular, the introduction of a new theory met with a lot of resistance. During the Qing dynasty, there were many new commentaries on the Shang Han Nun. In fact, many like Yu Zhao Yuan in the 18th century still claimed that all Chinese medicine could be explained by Shang Han Nun six channel theory. To facilitate Wen Bing acceptance, Practitioners in some cases adopted Shang Han Nun terminology to maintain continuity with the classics, but reinterpreted certain ideas. Wen Bing doctors defined many new diseases linked to the seasons. This allowed for a new notion of latent disease, which does not manifest itself in the season in which it is acquired. Wen Bing emphasized the treatment of yin and essence. The treatment of yin is a logical conclusion of treating heat and can also be traced back to the teaching of Zhu Dan Xi, who founded the Nourishing Yin School in the 14th century. But the practice of Wen Bing was mainly propelled by the need to deal with the epidemics that China faced in the Qing dynasty. In dealing with this, another factor came into play. The advent of Western medicine together with new notions of sanitary conditions proved to have greater success in dealing with mass epidemics. Today, TCM doctors recognize the contributions of both Shang Han Lun and Wen Bing in determining herbal treatment, and will often use formulas created by these movements. Nevertheless, in determining a diagnosis for a patient, most will be guided by eight principle or Ba Gang differentiation, whose foundations can be found in both schools. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you'll join me for future videos in this series.